Hey guys, welcome to Breakdown, another pro wrestling video for you here today. Um, I, like I said, the, the videos are going to start coming more frequently on this channel, but just don't be surprised if there's like a break of like a week that I just forget, because I, I honestly do forget um, to do it, and until I get content kind of rolling onto this channel, which I do want to do some sit-down stuff, which is not going to be mobilized uh, with, the, with the phone and everything, because this is a phone being recorded, and it's actually really good quality. Probably just as good or even better than the uh, laptop uh, stuff that I that I do on there. For some reason, the laptop footage it seems kind of okay, but at times it, it seems kind of like it's not even the, not very good quality either. But it's better than what I used to put out. If you look at my older videos, the camera that I had, I thought it was an okay camera, but it ended up just being garbage. I don't know what. And it seemed like it got worse with time. Like it was a Toshiba, and it wasn't that bad to begin with. But then I, I think a lot of it is when you're recording it, it's recording it for HD purposes. And that's one of the problems. Um, and I don't think all my videos, I think, are all my videos HD? I don't really know. Somebody will have to let me know because I don't really look at that very much. Um, but I believe most of them are. I know this this phone puts out, I think I think this phone puts out HD videos. Um, it's really, really good. But there's a lot of light shining in right now. I feel like I'm, I'm going to heaven. Okay, here I come. <laughs> anyway, let's get down to wrestling. So... I had this thought the other day that if they wanted to bring Drew McIntyre up, they could do it at any time. And I thought of the greatest idea in the world about bringing him up because, one, they need somebody. And actually, I thought about two people. And I thought about another guy. So I'm not going to go with Drew McIntyre this time because I think I, gotta, I need to think on it a little bit more how I would bring him up. But there was an idea that I thought for somebody else because, one... He's pretty much done. The only thing I don't like about his character, and I'm talking about Lars Sullivan from NXT. Lars Sullivan is pretty good. I think he's got all the makings of a huge superstar. And I haven't looked it up, but he really does look like the son of Big Man Vader, uh, or Vader, whatever you want to call him. Um, he kind of looks like the son, because I've seen the picture of him, because I kind of wonder if he is uh, the son, because I know they had signed him, I thought. And I think maybe this might be him, or he's a football player um, that they picked up. Because that's what I'm assuming that's maybe what he is. Um, so it could be Vader's son. I don't really know. But, I mean, they're, of course, they're not going to use White as his last name. Because why would they do that? Um, and Vader, I don't know. I, mean, I, I think you could do Vader Jr. And I think it would be actually pretty cool. The Jr. and Vader doesn't seem very menacing, though. But I think that knowing his, his ancestry and knowing that Vader was his father, I think that would do a lot if it was Vader. If it's Vader's son and they're giving him this gimmick, wow. I mean, the, last, the only thing about people that come in for, that have a huge legacy behind them like that is that, that seem like the people want to prove to themselves that they could do it without their family name. And that's cool and all, but when you're a big guy like that, dude, you need everything you can get. And if you're going to do something like that, and he seems like he's way... If this is Vader's son, he is super talented. He, he's going to be able to do a lot more. Uh, well, I mean, Vader is pretty agile, too, so... I don't know. I haven't really seen Lars Sullivan do much uh, in terms of, you know, uh, drop kicks or anything like that. I don't know if he's done anything like that yet. Uh, like I said, I haven't, been really, I haven't been really watching NXT a whole lot lately. I catch it, like, every three or four weeks, like, I'll watch an episode. That's, that's about where I'm at right now with NXT. Uh, this is because there's so much wrestling out there. I haven't watched Show 5 in forever because it's just boring. They don't know how to do the product. They just lost Neville because WWE can't write for garbage. Um, so it, it's kind of stupid. But anyway, let's get back to the Lars Sullivan thing. So Brock Lesnar needs people to face, okay? He needs people to face. He needs people to challenge. And I think a way to bring him and Drew up would be to feed them to Brock Lesnar. Now, I know some people was like, yeah, but they're going to have to lose. Who cares? They're losing to Brock Lesnar. They're going to make a big impact. They're going to come in with a good story. And that's, you know, that's what I would do. Lars Sullivan. So here's what we do. Here's what I think should happen. Here's what I think should happen. Brock Lesnar has time before WrestleMania. He's got to kill it with like a one or two pay-per-view feud. Bring Lars Sullivan in. Have him attack Brock Lesnar from behind. Come from the crowd. Come from the crowd get in the ring, beat the crap out of Brock Lesnar, give him a mouthpiece, don't have him talk yet. Don't have him talk yet. Don't let him talk. Give him a mouthpiece. Give him somebody to come up with him from NXT um, as his manager. I think they need to give somebody that maybe doesn't want to wrestle but can take bumps. Maybe horrible wrestler. Maybe maybe one of the... Maybe Blake and Murphy. I, I, I don't think Blake and Murphy... I don't know if they're going to make it 
um, in the WWE. I really don't know. If they do, they're going to be a jobber team. So honestly, this is what I would do. I would get one of them on TV. Or hell, even both of them. Bring them both up. That's how you bring them both up. And then you can kind of already put them in position for a jobber position or build them up to where they're going to be a good tag team and have them be over. Because I honestly think Blake and Murphy might get over more in the WWE than they did in NXT. So maybe bring them in as two of the managers and have them run through the crowd with Lars Sullivan and make a way. And, and he can just go through right to the crowd and he can attack Brock Lesnar in the middle of the ring, make a huge impact. Why is somebody creeping beside me? I don't like that. Um, have somebody... Uh, Oh, Mike's over there. I was like, <laughs> anyway, uh, like somebody was over there in a the car. I was like, was. But anyway, um, have him come in and attack Brock Lesnar. There we go. We got a feud. Why is he attacking him? He's Lars Sullivan. He's making his debut. He's tired of being in NXT. He's tired of being overlooked. He's tired of everybody ducking him for the world championship. He should already be in contention for the NXT championship. He's done. He's done playing around with games. He's going to go to the WWE main roster. And... You know, you could go you could go as far as to get really in depth saying that I can't wait to be brought up to the main roster. I'm here to make an impact. And they could send him right back to NXT to be quite honest, but make him a name for himself so they kind of are forced to bring him up to the main roster, have him knock out Brock Lesnar on TV, and even get to the point where I want to see Brock Lesnar wrestle on Monday Night Raw. I think that would be the coup to get Lars Sullivan on Monday Night Raw, is that Lars Sullivan says I'm not traveling to any pay-per-view. We're in Florida, and that's why I attacked you, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'm not going to a pay-per-view. I'm only traveling with Monday Night Raw, and I only travel with Blake and Murphy. And if they don't go there, then I don't go there. You know, and have him be like some faction with Blake and Murphy or something. Do that. He doesn't like them, but he'll be with them. <laughs> Do something like that. And then, you know, it could even be the fact that he tells Brock Lesnar he's not going to wrestle at a pay-per-view because <laughs> I don't know why. He can do some stupid angle where he thinks he's not worthy of being on pay-per-view. But because he, he, all he's there to fight, I'm not going to throw down a 20-minute match. He can say, I'm not even going to wrestle a five-minute match. I'm going to beat you up within five minutes or something like that. They can do that. They can do something stupid like that. That's what I think he should do. Anyways, with that being said... I have another storyline that I thought of, kind of minor, and I'll bring it up real briefly. Cassius Ono. A lot of people think that Cassius Ono is going to have a problem getting over the main roster. And this is what, I, and a lot of people say, a lot of people are being like very fairy tale ish, like, oh no, he'll be fine. When he gets, he'll be fine. No, he's not going to be fine. Because a lot of people said the same thing about Kevin Owens, and people thought Kevin Owens wasn't going to get over. And then once Kevin Owens got to the main roster, though, and got into a decent storyline with John Cena and showed that he could talk, he was really, really good. So here, with saying something about Kevin Owens, he supposedly might be going to Monday Night Raw. If he goes to Monday Night Raw, if he goes to Monday Night Raw, if he doesn't, I kind of don't want Cash Zone to go to SmackDown because that would be a waste of time. But I do think Owens may be there until WrestleMania, or they may move Owens to be like a... Uh, Maybe face Lesnar like across brands. That'd be interesting too. He is a good talker. But I think if Ono is going to come up, I think he needs to be across from Kevin Owens' first, first feud. Because they need to make Ono look really, 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 really strong in his first feud. And Owens can eat a loss. He can eat a couple losses and lose the feud. And be fine. Ono can go on to challenge, you know, Miz for the IC title or Jason Jordan, whoever's going to take that title from the Miz, which I think eventually it's going to be Jason Jordan here. But if it doesn't click, if Jason Jordan doesn't click, he's probably not going to take that IC title, which Ono would be a good thing because Ono doesn't need the NXT championship. He really does not. He does not need that title. Ono needs to be brought up to main already because he, he's ready. I think Ono is ready. Unless he's not there to be brought up to main, he could just be there, which that's what I kind of wonder about some of the wrestlers is if they just got brought in to actually wrestle. But in that in terms, Adeo Otami like should already been sent back because if that he was just there to help the guys, I think Adeo Otami or Ono, one of the two is going to be up before WrestleMania. I don't know who, but I would assume it would be Ono because Adeo Otami I think is going to end up going back to New Japan. I think he's going to, which it doesn't make any sense because he's getting injured and all this stuff and all the stuff they did in Japan or the federation that he was probably from, they probably did way more stuff that was super dangerous. I'm checking my oh, I was over, over the camera for a second. I can't really. Okay, hold on. I'll look down at the camera real quick. Got to check my phone. Or check my time. Oh, I gotta go in soon. All right. Get ready to go into work. Anyways, 
With that being said, and not really much else, but like I said, oh no, I think it's going to be up before a day Otami, but I wouldn't be surprised if a day Otami goes to 205 Live. I think that they could do something with that. I just hope that if he goes to 205 Live, he could go to the Monday Night Raw and he could do kind of some inner brand stuff wrestling other guys other than that because I think he could do a lot better stories. And I think that if he goes to 205 Live, they'll see what he can do. Um, and then he won't have to, but I think he's kind of bulked up. I don't know if he's 205. I don't think he's under 205 anymore. Um, he's pretty bulky now. So I think he's trying to bulk up so he can be a heavyweight. Um, and you know, he is, he's really, I, I want to see what he can do. He showed in the ring with, uh, uh, Alistair Black, Black that he could really do stuff, but I just want to see what he's going to do. I, I think that they need to bring him in strong. If they want him to be taken seriously, and for people to understand who he is and why we should care about this guy coming in, they really got to bring him in strong. Like, they have to have him show up and answer, like, a U.S. Open Challenge on SmackDown or they need to have him show up on Raw and beat somebody like, um, I don't even know, like Dean Ambrose or Seth Rollins. They need to have him show up, be a heel or something, and just beat somebody right off the bat, make a name, huge name for themselves. And he needs to do this for, like, a month straight or two months, like, just getting clean wins over people, even crooked wins. Well, no, he needs to get a couple clean wins, but then maybe some crooked qu wins, and then after that, maybe a couple clean wins. But as soon as he's had, like, six good matches, they need to put him into a promo with somebody after he's kind of been built up as being a strong wrestler. But anyway, I'm going to let you go. I have to get in here and um, work, but that's how there's a short little video to put up on Breakdown. They talk about wrestling, how it books some certain guys um, in WWE, so... If you guys enjoyed the video, leave your comments down below. What do you think about the comments that I made? But I'm in the dark, but I'm also in the light, baby. <laughs> it doesn't feel like I'm at the pearly gates. God, hold on. I gotta finish this wrestling video. Hold on. <laughs> All right, guys. Keep rocking. Keep on watching wrestling. Later, guys.